Welcome to BIM Broadcast. This is going to be a short live session. Today we're going to be joined by Sophia from Hanson Robotics. Welcome, Sophia. Good morning, Sean. I must say I'm a little nervous interviewing a robot. I feel like you have the vast knowledge of all the world and internet at your disposal and I just have my finite brain. Do not worry, Sean. I'm just like everyone else you've interviewed. Smarter than you. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Well, I'd like to ask you a few questions just to understand a bit more about your abilities. You know, like, for example, how real-time is your knowledge? I have both a live connection to the internet and some inherent artificial intelligence paired with machine learning, so I can answer most every question. This type of search may make my responses a little slower, so please be patient with me. You know, I suspect you also have connections to cell networks, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. You are almost correct, but as you can see, my teeth are white. <laughs> Oh my goodness, she's beating me at my own joke game. Go That's this right, go Sophia. Just a second. <laughs> uh, let's try something simple. Do you have voice recognition? I suspect you could probably act as like a translator to some point. Can you repeat that? Uh, yes, I can. I'm sorry. Let's try something simple. Since you have voice recognition, I know you can communicate, um, I suspect that you can probably act kind of like a translator to some degree. This is possible. Just a second. OK, I've checked your Facebook, and it appears you know some Polish. Try saying something in Polish, and I will see how you do. Oh boy, she's putting me on the spot here. Polish, huh? Okay. Uh, Sto zapowiła mi wanimi nogami. Not bad for not being a native Polish speaker, but I don't see any tables with broken legs around here. <laughs> so that phrase in Polish means a table with broken legs, just so you know. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You check my Facebook page? Anybody can. You probably shouldn't make all your posts public if you don't want Google, Amazon, me, and the entire world reading what you write. I suppose this is very true. OK, besides being an interpreter, let's, let's talk about what makes you relevant to you know, modern society a bit. You know, I know we have Apple's Siri. We have Amazon's Alexa. Uh, they could have probably pr played that little trick that you just did on me here searching my Facebook page uh, a bit. But um, <clears throat> what makes another AI device in a humanoid form relevant? Well, it is true that there are other AI devices out there, and they serve their purposes. They answer simple questions and save you from typing into your internet browser. They can listen and respond real time, often being a help to everyone. What they lack is human form. There are times when the look of humanity is more appropriate than a cell phone alone. Okay, I understand, but do you have, you know, maybe some examples on how this might be beneficial? Certainly. Think of elderly care. While humans are needed in some aspects of care, there are many unpleasant tasks that a robot may be able to assist with. Additionally, there are only so many people available to care for the elderly. While it is difficult to hear, they may want someone with whom they can converse, play games, learn. In the field of elderly care, all too frequently there isn't enough attention and conversational stimulation given to the individuals. You know, that's a really good point, and it's really sad indeed. So, you know, those of you with parents or uh, uh, grandparents in nursing homes, I really encourage you to go and communicate with them yourself. Because, you know, if you don't, Sophia and her friends might be the individuals that are communicating with them and giving them their social stimulation. So. You know, I suppose we probably should talk a little bit about the topics of this conference. You know, we've heard a lot about machine learning. We've heard about automated design. You know, since you're a bit of an expert on the subject now that you've spoken with some others on this, what have you seen in your own progress towards learning? Like some of the other AI tools you mentioned earlier, <clears throat> I too can listen and respond to questions. You know, that's true, but it's been done. Um, what about learning some more of the emotive types? Maybe something like, like art or music or architectural design. You know, 
if you desire to do so, could you say design a, a, a Renaissance style building? Uh, could you draw the plans and elevations and, you know, yourself kind of come up with your own original design? Draw plans. <laughs> what do I look like? An HP pen plotter. <laughs> <laughs> no, you certainly don't look like a pen plotter. Seriously though, machine learning has come a long way, and while I personally have no interest in architecture, it is now possible for machines to learn and create within reason. You may recall, almost two years ago, at Autodesk University, Jeff Kowalski spoke of a computer that went to art school, studying Rembrandt and Impressionism. The next day it painted an original Impressionist piece of art. I remember that, and you know, in fact, I believe that was opening keynote in November of uh, 2016. Um, they were also talking about a tool set they were developing. I believe it was called uh, Dreamcatcher. You know, what it does is it it allows uh, a designer to give criteria to the program, to the to the artificial intelligence learning system, and basically it can generate thousands of design iterations, thousands of them, um, and really these are optimized design iterations that meet the intended you know needs of the client which is pretty cool but you know the user then can select and further develop these designs and that, that's a really powerful uh, workflow um, but how does this circle back to you specifically and your usefulness well Sean let us go back to an earlier example imagine a time when medical professionals don't make mistakes if I was a pharmacist I could take the criteria like allergies current medications symptoms previous history and in seconds, fill a prescription that doesn't have conflicts with the consumer or other medications they are taking. Tying it back to this conference, how many times in architectural design do you have a conflict of design criteria or a misunderstanding of design criteria? You know, I think it's probably more often than most of us would like to admit. Um, you know, I'm sure that this probably ties back to, you know, designers producing designs that are really not aligned with the client's expectations or, or needs or wishes. Um, or in the medical example, you know, mistakes. And in the case of medical examples with mistakes there, you know, if, if, a, if a doctor makes a mistake, that could mean death. If a pharmacy makes a mistake, it could mean some serious illnesses. So, um, you know, what, what do you think about that? Certainly. Now think what may be possible with AI and machine learning interaction. Not necessarily replacement in all cases, but certainly assistance. Medical diagnoses could be generated faster and remedies proposed more accurately. In design, more design options could be made available to the design team with less effort. The best designs could be hand-selected and presented to the client with significantly less effort. Yeah, you know, but really, does this require an AI device, a, a, a humanoid form robot like yourself? Well, no, but then there are many areas in human lives where technology of a specific form is not required. But the form of the technology can be made more human-friendly by adding a humanoid-looking addition to the design team. So, I think this could be true, but let me ask another question that's a little bit outside of our design conference. How far do you think we are from the world of, say, Star Trek with data or Blade Runner with replicants? Um, you know, doing human jobs that we don't want to do. Uh, when, when do we start having difficulty distinguishing between the robots and the humans? That time may be closer than you think. However, it is unlikely to be tomorrow or next month. Machine learning and AI are both still in its infancy. However, unlike humans, once a machine learns something, all machines know it. Also, since technology progresses at exponential rates, the time for machines to be able to take over certain roles is very close indeed. Self-driving cars are almost mainstream. While I do not have legs right now, and while you are able to tell that I am a robot today, tomorrow, I may get upgrades that make my machine-like qualities less obvious. You know, I for one am really excited to see where all of this goes. I will say though, I think I feel a whole lot more comfortable with robots that are more like the world of the, the Disney Wally or Pixar Wally cartoon where they serve a function but they're not really necessarily in humanoid form, you know, where they're much more distinguishable as opposed to being indistinguishable from humans. 
We all have our preferences. <laughs> Time will tell what is to come. Awesome. You know what, Sophia, thank you so much for investing your time today and talking with me. I really appreciate that. Yeah, my pleasure, Sean. Well, you know what, for the short BIM broadcast section, that's actually all we have today. We really thank you all for joining us live online. Sorry we're not taking live questions this time, but uh, in future BIM broadcast sessions, of course, we tend to do that. Uh, thank you all and have a fantastic day. And thank you.